Oh, welcome back, guys. We've got a really, really good account today, actually. It's another week of Platinum. That today we have Danube, who is a longtime supporter and friend of the channel. Danube has a, another whopping great big completion rate in this one. We've we're doing well this uh, this season, this season of Platinum. That Danube has two hundred and five platinums for a whopping ninety five point five percent completion rate. Let's jump in, shall we? Okay, and to get the ball rolling, we have eleven eleven memories retold, which is a fantastic indie game. Game that stars uh, Elijah Wood. You're playing in, I believe it is World War One. Uh, sort of seeing the two sides of the war, which is a very interesting sort of uh, sort of perspective, and also really interesting way to start the list. We then move into a way out, which I think is a uh, staple for this series. I almost need to do a Project Platinum on it at some point just to really seal the deal with this one because it seems to uh, pop up every single week. We then have Alan Wake's 100%, which is very impressive. Obviously, Alan Wake is a uh, sort of, uh, I guess, action horror game set in the Remedy universe. It's a very, very good game. Uh, definitely dated, I would say, the first Alan Wake. Probably a little too much uh, endless spawning enemies and uh, and sort of corridor hallway type combat experiences for my liking. The DLC in this one does absolutely suck. I hate both of the DLCs in this one, um, kind of just sort of weird asset flippy combination things, but it is impressive to see that you did smash them out and also in uh, just under two weeks, which is really cool to see. Alien Isolation, you know, I love to see this, you know, that getting in a spooky season, we're absolutely going to see some Alien Isolation on the channel. Um, Fantastic game. It probably drags on a little too much, too long, um, but the no death runs and stuff like that are very, very impressive. And I do love to see this completion on lists. And speaking of things that you know that I love to see on a list, we have all a, a lot of Assassin's Creed's. We have Brotherhood's 100%. Awesome. Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed 3 100%, obviously these being unobtainable now with uh, server closures. I actually didn't know the Black Flag PS3 had server closures too, so that's interesting to see there. Uh, I assume that's probably the um, Discovery Trophy is probably unobtainable on this one, but I also love to see it. You've also got Liberation, which probably means that you do have Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered. You just haven't done it yet. Danube, get onto that. Uh, we then have Odyssey and Origins, 100%. Fantastic. Oh, good games. Odyssey's one I'm looking forward to eventually going back and retrying uh, for, for the channel. Um, perks of having project platinum and this new challenge with this brand new account is i will sort of get to experience some of these games again and sort of see if my opinions do stay on them odyssey is one of those ones that i'm very curious about it's it's an okay game Od origins for me was always the better of the two um you don't have valhalla which is probably for the best but uh, i would definitely say origins was better than odyssey in my opinion uh we then have revelations 100 which is nice to see there um that might even be one of your first trophies there I'm going to assume, given that it is very, very old and is missing timestamps, which means that you earned some trophies prior to connecting your console to the internet, um, which means that you've got a very old cons uh, account too. In fact, it's over a decade old, which is uh, always very, very nice to see. I love to see some sort of trophy history like that. Uh, we then have Rogue, Syndicate, and we round out the Assassin's Creed with my personal favorite, uh, Unity's 100%, which is nice. I do remember the DLC for Unity being a little bit on the average side, if I am honest, but it is really nice to see it uh, represented right here. Astro's Playroom, uh, looks like you've gone in and done the most recent trophy that came out again this year. In fact, you did smash out the game. I think you only just recently got a PS4, if I'm uh, not mistaken. I think you only got that like a week ago or so. I think this is actually your first PS4 Platinum, which is cool. Um, Danube is a, uh, a moderator on the Platinum Standard, which is the Discord server that we run. Link in the description below. Um, but uh, I think I do remember you talking about just getting a brand new console uh, in there. We then have the Batman series here and a very, very impressive 100% right here. Uh, Arkham Asylum, but City especially, and, and Night as well, but City especially, those combat challenges and the Predator challenges in this one specifically are an absolute nightmare. So I'm actually seriously impressed that you do have the 100% for this trilogy that is very impressive sadly you don't have origins and based on the number of trophies you're missing i'm gonna say that it is probably the multiplayer that is tragically missing here 
We then have both Telltale Batman's games, followed by Bentley's Hack Pack, which is a um, spin-off of the Sly Cooper games. And before we get too far into the list as well, I just want to announce that I've um, I've released channel memberships with the uh, YouTube, with content sort of coming back out a lot more uh, and having a lot of grand plans. I sort of feel a lot more confident, I would say, and a lot more sort of like it's worth doing uh, with the memberships and stuff. Obviously they are totally optional. Um, one of the benefits of it is that um, you will have, there'll, there'll be two lists for Platinum that essentially the regular one, which everyone's account will go on to. And I will just essentially do them in the list of, of order of uh, first in best dressed, but then member ones will also be fast tracks. So there'll be a list of those and there'll be at least one or two member Platinum that's per month. So if you want your list covered faster, that's the way to go. However, it is totally optional. There are a lot of other uh, benefits to it as well. But uh, for now, let's get back to the list. I just thought I'd announce that real quick. Uh, we then have Beyond Two Souls, which is a David Cage game, followed by uh, only two of the Bioshocks. You don't have Bioshock 2, which is interesting because I actually, I actually quite like Bioshock 2 personally. Um, it is nice to see the 100% uh, for Infinite. However, the arena-based challenges in this one are fairly rough, to be honest. So it is uh, it is cool to see them here. And I don't think the PS3 version has the glitch that you can use to your benefit in the uh, PS4 version. Only one Call of Duty with Call of Duty Ghosts. You have 100%ed it, which is very impressive. I remember some of those DLC trophies can be very grindy in this one, especially getting the data pads on the third map, I believe it was, the uh, Navy boat, getting them to spawn. Oh, that took me some time personally. Only one Crash Bandicoot with the first one, but it is 100%, which you love to see. We then also only have one Dark Souls. So I'm noticing, Danube, you like to dabble. You like to dip your toes in, but you don't commit to a series except Assassin's Creed. So you're in my good books. Um, Dark Souls, 100%. You smash that out. Again, same thing with Darksiders. However, it is really cool to see this was clearly clean up for you because you did belt it out in 12 years. Uh, we then have Dave the Diver, which you did on uh, in, in May of this year, which I believe Dave the Diver was our Platinum Club uh, game for May this year. So essentially Platinum Club is another event that we do host in the Platinum Standard, link in the description, of course, uh, where essentially once a month, John Zier, one of the other mods, picks a game uh, off of the PS Plus catalog, and we all go for the game. We all go for the Platinum. It's very fun with this lot of discussion. Highly recommend. Do join us there. Uh, this month is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, so it's been fun replaying through that. We then have Dead Space, which you smashed out in two weeks. Um, phenomenal remake. This is another one I plan on covering at some point. Uh <laughs> If you had told me that I would love Dead Space remake by EA and hate um, uh, Callisto Protocol, I would have laughed at you, but, but this is 100% the case. I adore this game. I don't like Callisto Protocol at all, but this is this is a perfect remake to me. I actually I actually would say that I liked this a lot more than Resident Evil 4 even. Uh, they both obviously came out within a couple of months for one another, the uh, remakes, but I adore this one. We then have the original Dead Space, which he did in four months, which is really cool. Destroy All Humans remake is here. I am curious to noob if you plan on doing the second one. I do know that it is leaving plus this month, but it is free currently. So maybe that is one to uh, think about to complete the series. Uh, Dishonored, you've done a, all but a couple of the trophies. Uh, I assume Back Alley Brawl is one of the trophies that's missing. Uh, that is absolute hell. They then have Dishonored 2's 100%, which is really, really nice to see, followed by uh, a game that doesn't have a platinum. I think this is one of the first ones we've not seen with a platinum here in Disney Infinity 2.0, which is sadly unobtainable due to three trophies uh, probably having a server closure. Doom, fantastic game, fantastic remake. Uh, the multiplayer is a bit grindy. You can sort of, if you've got a group, you can probably do it in about six to 10 hours, but uh, you smash it out in two years. Uh, Dragon Age, we've got Dragon... In fact, we have all of the Dragon Ages, which is nice to see here. You can also say that, that um, some of these games are quite early on, so you will see some missing timestamps. Essentially, what that means is Danube has earned trophies before connecting his console to the internet, which back in 2010 to 2012 uh, was pretty commonplace 
place. So uh, my early account never saw the light of the internet, which is why I don't have access to it anymore. It's uh, local to a console still, which uh, that console might be in the background. It's not. It's in the it's in the boxes still. I uh, still got to unpack some of the boxes six months after moving in because I'm lazy. But we have the Dragon Ages here. We've got Dragon Age 2's 100%, followed by Inquisition's 100%, which is nice to see. The Trials DLC for Inquisition is... Uh, actually fairly annoying, so I am quite happy to see that. You did a good job, mate. Uh, and then we have Origins at 100% as well, followed by Dragon Ball Z Budokai HD Collection, Dragon Age 9 Echoes of... Uh, sorry, 11 Echoes of Elusive Age. 9 was the one on the DS that's amazing. Um, this is another one I'd really like to do at some point. You then have a game that kind of was one of the two big killers of Skyrim for me in uh, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Dragon's Dogma... Uh, at least the first one, I haven't tried the second one yet, is phenomenal. I love this game. Uh, so it is cool to see that you uh, that you got this one done too. I don't know what the Platinum would be like these days on this one because the pawn system, I assume, in the first game is probably either shut down or very, very dead at this point. We then have Eric is 100%, followed by Ether 1, followed by the original release of Fall Guys, which is obviously no longer obtainable due to the... Uh, launcher changing to the new release uh so it is cool to see that you did smash out that 100 percent um also based on the timestamp, you did it before the glitch which lets you uh win five games in a row back to back in private mode which a lot of people used uh so it looks like you didn't do that which is very impressive we then have some fallouts here the only one we're missing is fallout 76 uh and fallout shelter if you count it but you do have the 100 percent in three four and New Vegas. Uh, Fallout 4 is the only Fallout 4 for this list, but it is 100%, and I'm so glad this is obtainable again. This is another one I plan on doing a Platinum that for ASAP. So let me know if you need the uh, multiplayer trophies for that, because we're going to have to uh, do a cheeky boost. Uh, we then have some Final Fantasies here, and by some we have quite a few actually in 7 original release, uh, 7 remake twice. You were that excited for it. Um, in fact, this then goes against the, the thing where I thought you bought a, uh, a PlayStation 5 recently because you did this in March. So disregard that entire comment if you haven't already left a comment, of course. Uh, and then we've got 10, followed by 13, followed by 16. Uh, you haven't done the DLC in 16 yet, but uh, I've heard good things about 16. I haven't tried it myself. Um, I actually wasn't the biggest fan of 7 Remake, to be perfectly honest with you. I really liked the original. But um, maybe I'll have to, uh, to give 16 a go at some point myself. And round out the Fs, we have Flow. Okay, and we now move into the Gs with Ghostbusters, which I think just got taken off PS Plus from memory. Uh, we then follow this with the God of Wars and quite a few. We might have all of the God of Wars here. So we've got God of War 2018, God of War's original release, uh, God of War 2, God of War 3, the best God of War, uh, 3 remastered, Ragnarok at 100%, which is nice. It's nice to see you gone back and done that, uh, that like rogue mode DLC that they did. Uh, Ascension, Chains of Olympus, and Ghost of Sparta. You have all of the God of Wars. That is actually really, really impressive, Danube. Congratulations. That's probably my favorite series completion we've seen so far, besides the um, Arkham series. Uh, Grim Grimoire once more. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Uh, it's a rare game I've never seen before followed by Heavy Rain, which has become a bit of a staple for the series. Uh, Helldivers 2 smashed out in three months. Uh, this is one I've played a little bit of and really enjoyed. I actually adore the first game, which is very different from this. Uh, Helldivers 1 is actually a twin six shooter that is fantastic. Uh, I do... I would like to do Helldivers 2 at some point. It's just a case of it is now part of the never-ending backlog. Uh, especially with the new account. And I have so many games I'd already done previously that will now be featured in content, which means that they're then brought forward as well, which is, uh, I don't even want to know the size of the backlog with that. We then have all the Hitmans here. Uh, sorry, we don't have the first Hitman, but we technically do. Um, because we have Hitman 2 and Hitman 3 at 100%, which means you've done Hitman 1 three times and Hitman 2 twice, which is crazy to think about because the DLC for each of these games is the previous game, which is kind of crazy, to be honest. Uh, I adore these Hitman games. I have fond memories of way back in the day, back when I was bald, 
Um, I used to do streams where I'd have the barcode on the head uh, and we'd do a lot of like costume changes and stuff, which is very, very fun. Do let me know actually if you guys would like to see some streams uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm tempted to bring streams over to here, maybe do them every couple of weekends on games that I'm working towards for Project Platinum and maybe even a couple um, Platinum streams as well. So do let me know if that's something you guys would actually quite like. Uh, we then have Hogwarts Legacy, which is smashed out in three weeks. Um, this game's okay. I don't have too much to say about Hogwarts Legacy. I wasn't a big fan of the combat, but uh, Hogwarts and Hogsmeade as environments are fantastic. Uh, we then have Horizon Zero Dawn. I am interested, Danube, if you do plan on doing West at some point. Uh, the Infamouses, we have a full series completion here, which is really nice to see. We have Infamous 1, Infamous 2, Festival of Blood, which was sort of the um, sort of spin off to uh, to number two. It had a bunch of vampires in it. It was actually pretty cool. They smashed that out in five hours. Uh, First Lights, the arena based one. And then, of course, Second Sun. Um, Jack, we've got the Jack series here. And you didn't use the debug menus, which is really nice to see. Uh, you are racing, you are missing the, uh, the racing one. Is it DX racer? I think the name is from memory. I'm curious if that's one you plan on doing at some point. Uh, Jetpack Joyride. This was a game on your phone originally, but it did make its way to consoles and you did get the completion back on the PS3. Um, Telltale games here. This is a, um, the Jurassic Park series here. We're actually very early Telltale games. This is sort of Pre The Walking Dead. They actually did a couple other weird ones way before trophies. There's a um there's one for Lost. There's one for I think CSI, and I think there's also one for um Prison Break as well, which is really sort of interesting to uh to think about. But this was one of the early ones. I don't think that this is a particularly memorable one. I don't ever really see people talk about it. But uh, on some of the older accounts on Platinum, that this seems to be a uh, bit of a commonplace. So that is kind of cool to uh, to see as well. Uh, Keenan Bridges Spirits, you smashed that out in a week. Um, we then get some juicy kill zones here, which are actually really, really juicy to see here, especially kill zone two. That multiplayer was uh, was not particularly easy, so it is nice to see. You have the full series completion. You don't, however, have the standalone for uh, Shadowfall. So Shadowfall's multiplayer uh, actually also had a standalone list that, while being pretty much identical to the base game's multiplayer list, did also have a couple of um, standalone trophies on it too, which is kind of interesting. Obviously, this is now unobtainable due to uh, Shadow Falls DLC shutting down uh, or server shutting down, rather. We then have Kingdom Come Deliverance, which is an amazing game. I love to see this 100%, especially because I know you've got to actually run through the game a couple of times to, uh, to actually get the 100% for this. You've got to do a hardcore for the DLC and stuff, um, which is actually really, really tricky. Uh, it took you a year, so I assume you probably did a playthrough or two, had a very large break, and then came back for like another year of uh, of, of, of uh, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Come Deliverance, goodness. This is definitely one I would love to do at some point if I had a lot more free time. Uh, we've got some Kingdom Hearts here with uh, the first game, uh, 358-2 Days 2. Rechain of Memories is the only one you've not platinumed. In fact, you've only done a couple of the trophies and left it for very nearly 10 years now. So I'm curious if this is one you plan on going back to or if it just didn't tickle your fancy. And then we also have Recoded as well. Um, we then got Knack at 100%, which is impressive to see because you've got to do a lot of sort of runs if your RNG is bad to get some of the chests and stuff to spawn. So that is uh, impressive there. I also apologize if you can hear Wowsy in the background. Wowsy is our uh, is one of our cats. Uh, he is having a cry because I've uh, I've shut the door on him. I've done a severe injustice to the poor boy. Um, we then got LA New R. Uh, again, this is a very old one where you're missing the timestamps on it, um, but it is a phenomenal game. This is one that I really wish we had uh, we had more games in the series. It's a really interesting concept, really interesting technologies used behind uh, recording some of the little face gestures and stuff like that. And it is another one I actually do plan on doing sort of probably before the end of the year because I genuinely love this game. Uh, Legends of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul, I've never heard of in my life, uh, followed by some Lego games here with Lego Dimensions, Lego Harry Potter 1 through 4, no 5 through 7, which is interesting, uh, Lego Jurassic World, this is one I actually kind of want to do at some point soon, uh, and then Lego The Hobbit, which is 
uh, our last month's plat, plat Club, I believe. Yeah, that was that was uh, July's Plat Club uh, game. We then have Life is Strange and Life is Strange Before the Storm. No Life is Strange 2, probably for the best, uh, as well as no um, Life is Strange True Colors, which is my personal favorite of the entire series. That's actually one that is worth doing at some point. Um, we then have Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is a sort of spin-off uh, to the Yakuza series. I've heard very good things about this. I think this was the most recent one to come out. I'm not entirely sure on that, however. Uh, Little Big Planet 3 sadly is unobtainable um, due to server closures. I think Little Big one of the Little Big Planets had its servers hacked, and I don't think it was this one. I think this one was already... Uh, closed before that point. Uh, and then we also have Lollipop Chainsaw, which is an incredible game. I'm actually looking forward to the uh, to the remake of this one coming out at some point. Alrighty, and then we get into uh, quite a few Marvel games here, actually, with Marvel vs. Capcom 3, The Fate of Two Worlds. Uh, not 100% uh, complete, but you are very, very close. So I am interested uh, to see, is this one you're saving for a milestone or is it because the remaining trophies are specifically quite difficult? Uh, we then get into Guardians of the Galaxy, followed by Spider-Man, uh, twice here, as well as Spider-Man 2 and Miles Morales' Double Stack, which I think is the only auto pop we've seen on the, uh, on the list so far here with one second. We then move into a lot of Mass Effect, um, with Mass Effect 1 twice, Mass Effect 2 twice, Mass Effect 3 twice, and Andromeda, which you don't see very often due to uh, how particularly not great that game is. And also the Legendary Editions uh, list, which is very, very impressive there. That's the one with the uh, extra difficulty runs and uh, stackable kill trophies and stuff on it that I think a lot of people sort of try and avoid uh, putting on their lists. Medieval Dynasties next. I remember talking with you quite a bit on this one. This is one that I'm also quite interested in, where essentially you just create a medieval dynasty. Uh, you develop out a, um, like a village, uh, turn it into a town, do a bunch of stuff in it. It looks very relaxing. This is one where I'm sort of waiting for a deep, deep sale, and then I'll probably jump on this myself for a, uh, for a future video. We then have Medieval Remake, followed by some Metal Gear here with uh, pretty much all of the Metal Gears here as well. Uh, two Sons of Liberty, three snakes, uh, Snake Eater, four Guns of the Patriots, uh, five Ground Zeroes, and five Fan of Pain, both 100%, which you like to see. Uh, normally, Ground Zeroes kind of gets forgotten about given that it's kind of like a weird standalone uh standalone uh prologue for the phantom pain uh probably arguably better than the phantom pain in some in some regards cough story cough uh or lack thereof in both uh and then we have metal gear solid peace walker as well just to round out those Metal Gear Solids. Uh, we then have Metro here with 2023, uh, 2033, sorry, Exodus and Last Light Redux. I love to see these. I also love to see the hundred percent for these, especially Exodus. Um, Exodus having some annoying trophies in there. So that is cool to see those all complete there. That's another series I look forward to covering on the channel at some point. Uh, at this point, it's pretty safe to say that I just want to cover every single game ever on the channel. Um, we then have Metal, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor here, and Shadow of War 100%. I, again, love to see these, especially Shadow of Mordor with the uh, two trial trophies in the DLCs. A lot of people don't do those, so it is cool to see you have smashed those out yourself. Uh, Minecraft, we've got a lot of these, 100% on the PS3, 100% on the PS4, stack as well as set to mm, it's juicy it's juicy we then have april's plat club game with uh, minute here you smash this out in two hours minute was fantastic this is essentially a roguelike where you have a minute to live when you die you keep the items you found on your previous run and the shortcuts i believe stay unlocked um so you know you're sort of able to get further with each run it's fantastic i highly recommend minute uh, quite a bit. Necromunda Hide Gun. This is a game I was talking about on a previous Plat Club that I really want to play. Um, and I was asking people about it. I can say as an update, I have bought the game and I have installed the game. So do let me know if you want a Necromunda Hired Gun Project Platinum as like potentially even like an in-between while I'm working on Resident Evil. Uh, do let me know if you would like that one. Uh, Cause I do know it's quicker. I think that game is like a 10 hour Platinum. 
uh, Resident Evil I'm sort of towards the end of my first playthrough uh, and I think I've got like six playthroughs to do. We then have Nelson Tether Puzzles Agent followed by Observation. Uh, Overcooked 100% is really nice to see there. Overlord 2 being here is really really impressive that is a whopping 1.89% ultra rare completion. Uh, Praise 100% is another really cool one especially the fact that the um, the DLC is this weird like roguelike mode so it's really cool to see that that has uh has been wrapped up um that i i remember it not being actually a bad roguelike either uh quorn undying thoughts i've never heard of so you will have to tell me what that is uh and then we get into a whopping great big chunk of um of ratchet and clanks here with the 2014 remake uh the original game two going commando three up your arsenal uh cranky a crack in time all for one, which is I think is the only one with any multiplayer in it. Full Frontal Assault, Into the Nexus, and A Rift Apart. I was actually very excited to see the original game here, Ratchet and Clank, being re-released on PS4 and PS5 on uh, PlayStation Plus. That's another one I do really want to uh, to get into at some point, hopefully very very soon. Um, we then have Rayman Origins here, followed by only one Resident Evil in Resident Evil 7. You do have the Platinum, however, you have not got stuck into the uh, 100% here. This is one I'd really like to see clean up, Danube. That would also be quite a good one for your completion rate. Uh, I also like that I'm seeing some Sherlock down here. Rhyme, I love Rhyme. It's an indie puzzle sort of walking simmy game. It's good fun, highly recommend. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, this is one of the Tomb Raider series alongside Shadow, and I assume probably 20. 13 down below um it's an okay trilogy of games i probably very five out of ten at best in these i think rise is probably the best of the three either rise or 2013 shadow is pretty pretty meh but uh rise is pretty good i don't like the challenge mode in this game at all uh and i think pretty much all of the dlcs in rise of the tomb raider are pretty rough to be honest uh, Sacred 2 Fallen Angel I've not heard of, I don't believe. Uh, Shadow I just touched up on. It's the final game in that trilogy. It's pretty lackluster in my opinion. Uh, we then move into two Sherlock Holmes games. I actually really like these Sherlock Holmes games, especially The Devil's Daughter from Memory is a really, really good one. Uh, essentially, you're solving crimes by exploring crime scenes and looking at different items and sort of piecing stuff together a la um, Sinking City, for example. We then have Sid Meier's Civilization 6. I love to see this 100%, especially given the fact that the Platinum is like 30% of the trophy list. So it is cool to see you did continue this one on and smash out that juicy completion. Uh, Sly, the Sly series here, we've got all of them. Sly 2, Sly 3, Sly 1. Uh, and I think 4 is Thebes in Time, but I'm not entirely sure. I've actually never played a Sly game. I know, blasphemy. I do know one of them got recently ported to the PS4, PS5. So uh, possibly a, pl a Project Plat at some point. Um, I've heard good things. Do let me know if that is something you guys would like to see because I genuinely don't know this series at all, to be perfectly honest with you. And then another series I do want to cover at some point is Spyro. All three games here, you smashed all three of them out uh, pretty much back to back by the look of it um, over the course of uh, the end of September and the start of October in 2020. We then have Star Wars Battlefront 1, only Star Wars on the list, which is interesting. It's also probably one of the grindiest Star Wars games in general, besides, of course, um, Star Wars Pinball. I would say this is probably the next most grindy of the whole lot. Um, so it is cool to see this one here as well. I do like that this is another one where you've gone back and cleaned it up several years after initially starting it. Uh, Steins Gate, followed by the Siphon Filter games with 1, 2, 3, and Dark Mirror, uh, and Logan Shadow. I always forget that one exists. I think it was a, um, was a PSP game from memory. We then have the Dark Pictures games here. Three of the four, you don't have the uh, most recent one, which uh, The Devil in Me, I believe it's called, and that's one that actually... I'm very curious on. I two months for Man of Medan's probably very justified. I found that one very rough to try and sit through myself. It is so boring. 
But uh, the other one I've played is House of Ashes. I played this one as well. And this one's actually pretty good. Um, never got the platinum because, again, these are the sorts of games where you got to do them like three or four times and you can't skip the cutscenes and you got to pick certain traits. It's, uh, it's a little dull, to be honest, but uh, I do love that you smash these out. They are good games. They just have very rough trophy lists, in my humble opinion. Uh, we then have Elder Scrolls Online. This is one you're actively working on at the moment and making big, big progress on, man. That is uh, actually very impressive. I do know that you recently did the Imperial City DLC, uh, and I think you're looking at doing all the um, the base game Sky Shards and stuff as well. Elder Scrolls Online, this is a hot take for you all. This is, this is a big hot take for you all. Elder Scrolls Online is the best Elder Scrolls game by far. Skyrim's okay. Skyrim's, Skyrim's okay. It's a good game. I'm looking forward to trying it myself. Uh, you liked enough to do it twice. But Oblivion's a great game. Morrowind's a better game. And then Elder Scrolls Online is the best. by Easily. It is, it is a very good game. The story quests are actually really good in this. I don't have too much experience with MMOs outside of Elder Scrolls Online. Um... But I, I actually really liked this game. I played a lot of Elder Scrolls Online uh, and, and really genuinely did love it. So this is one, if you are willing to try and go for Emperor and the fishing trophy and some of the other really grindy stuff that does actually take like 600 hours, uh, I would I would highly recommend it. It's, it's a very good game. Uh, certainly better than Skyrim, which is still... Skyrim, Skyrim's still good. It's okay. Um, I... I need to go back to Skyrim at some point. I haven't played Skyrim since probably about 2013, 2014. Uh, like I said earlier in the list, Dragon's Dogma and Dark Souls 1 kind of killed Skyrim for me in that I sort of, with Skyrim, I enjoyed exploring the world and I enjoyed doing the quests, but I found everything mechanically was really, really bad, uh, especially just the combat in general. Either you were a stealth archer and the game was fun or you played something else and it was really, really lacking. Um, and then I went and played those games where like every option was viable um, and uh, and that kind of killed Skyrim for me. But uh, I do need to go back and give this another try. I'm interested, Danu, because I do know the uh, PS5 version, uh, the, the PS5 obviously has a version as well. Whether or not you're planning on going back to it at some point, uh, do let me know. We then have The Expanse, which I think is the most recent Telltale game, followed by Forgotten City twice. This was the Platinum Club game of April in 2023. So it is cool to see that you did do both versions of it there. Uh, the Godfather 2 on PS2. This is kind of like a GTA clone that was really, really good on the uh, PS3. Some Last of Us here with Part 1. Part 1 remastered the first time and uh, and Part 2 all at 100%. The Order 1886, which I really wish we did get a sequel for. This game is fantastic. Uh, the Quarry, another absolutely fantastic game here. Uh, this is again by the guys that did uh, Until Dawn, which I believe we'll probably see below. Uh, and the Dark Pictures games. This one's really, really good. Uh, it's one that I would like to do shocker in a video at some point. I should just stop... Do a, do a shot every time I say I'm going to do a video on something. I dare you. I double dare you. Tell me how you went at the end of the comments if you're still alive. Um, fantastic game. Really, really good one. This one's got a quite a good cast. It's got people like David Arquette in it, which is really interesting. Uh, definitely recommend this one. Definitely one I do want to redo on the new account. Um the Unfinished Swan is next, followed by quite a lot of Telltale's Walking Dead with the first season twice, A New Frontier, season two twice, and the final seasons. I think you are missing a few of them here, but uh, it is cool to see quite a big beefy completion there. Uh, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, you smashed this one out as well. Um, another fantastic RPG. Wolf Among Us twice, another Telltale game, probably the best Telltale game in my opinion. Uh, another one I'm looking forward to re-going through again at some point. Uh, Titanfall 2, one of the best first-person shooter campaigns of all time. Easily, hands down, this game is fantastic. Another one I would love to redo, but I am slightly concerned to the... Uh, to the state of the multiplayer at this point, whether or not that's worth uh, trying to do. Rainbow Six Siege is 100% is really nice to see. It looks like, I think you did do it after the trophy requirements changed. I think by 2020, 
they had removed uh, t uh, Terrorist Hunt, which is a shame because that mode actually slapped. Uh, here's the Tomb Raider uh, start of the reboot series that I expected to see at some point. Here it is here, which is nice to see. We then have Tunic here in June, which I believe was our Plat Club, Club game for June. So Danub, uh, I, I would be interested to know how many of the Plat Club games you've actually done at this point. Uh, I would... I would be very confident to say that it's either you or John Zier that has the most completions for Plat Club. Uh, we then have UFC, followed by all of the Uncharted's by the look of it, with uh, sadly 2 and 3's DLC being unobtainable. Uh, these can't really be boosted up anymore, tragically. But you do have the remasters at 100%, which means you did have to do the brutal playthroughs. Uh, you have Uncharted 4 complete here as well, which is really nice to see because the crushing difficulty in the uh, DLC is very, very difficult. So it is cool to see that you did smash this out last year. Uh, Drake's Fortune twice and Lost Legacy. No Thebes collection, so I'm interested, or um, Legacy of Thebes, I believe it's called. I'm interested if that is one you do plan on doing at some point, possibly. Uh, Until Dawn, the first game by the Dark Pictures guys. Until Dawn's amazing. Uh, it's probably the best of the whole lot. Uh, even better than the quarry. Those two are probably first and second for me. I'm not entirely sure which one I would put in the lead, but uh, Until Dawn is fantastic. Uncharted Goose Game in May of 2023. That's another Plat Club game. Uh, Uncharted Goose Game's fun. You just run around as a goose creating absolute chaos. It is fantastic. I uh, highly, highly recommend this game to everyone. Up here, uh, followed by Valiant Hearts, which is an Ubisoft game based on the uh, the First World War. Uh, it's kind of like a side-scrolling like puzzle game. I love this game. Fun fact, uh, a second game actually came out this year. Ubisoft did nothing to promote it. I think it's called A Journey Home, possibly. Valiant Hearts, A Journey Home or something like that. And it's just as good as the first game. I highly recommend that one, uh, Danube, if you do want to uh, complete the series here. Vampire, made by the guys that did uh, Banished and uh, the Life is Strange series. This is a very fun vampire game. I do love some of the trophies in this where you got to uh, eat everyone versus keep everyone alive. So you get a lot of sort of micromanaging of stuff. Uh, we then have the two Watch Dogs games here that are worth playing, uh, both at 100%, which is really, really nice to see. Wolfenstein, the new orders here as well, followed by x -Blaze. Uh, code Embryo, Yakuza Like a Dragon. So it is interesting to see that both of the Yakuza games on your list are um, the uh, sort of spin-offs and not necessarily the mainline series. And to round us off, we have a Plat Club game from February of this year in Zombie, which is a uh, Ubisoft launch title for the Wii U. Um, what a plot twist that is. Uh, this game's actually not too bad. You do have to do three playthroughs, which sucks. The game is fun on the first playthrough, uh, not on the other two at all, really. But uh, it's very fun. I do like the permadeath sort of thing it's got going where um, if you if you die, you start again as a new character and have to find the gear that your old character had on its zombified corpse. That is a really, really nice touch. But... Danube, you've got a phenomenal account, mate. Uh, it's it's another continuation of what has been an absolutely seriously beefy series so far in season three. Um, just a couple side things here. If you did make it this far in the in the comments below, tell me what you were doing when you watched this video. Were you boosting a game? Did you have it up on the TV? Um, were you commuting to work? Do let me know where you actually watch these videos because I know quite a few of you do enjoy watching these when you're like on the train to work and stuff, which is always really, really cool to me. And do let me know what sort of content you guys want to see more. Do you want to see more live streams? Do you want to see more Project Platinums? Should I do a Project Platinum for literally every single game I complete? Um, more more, uh, more Platinum that. Should I bring back shorts? Should I bring back the top 10 lists? So, you know, top 10 um, Platinums for beginners or top 10 unobtainable trophy like Platinums I wish I could get. Um, stuff like that. Do let me know what you guys want to see because I am uh, genuinely having a blast being back making content. Uh, again, I will plug the members uh, below the YouTube members. If you do want to support the channel, I really appreciate it. Um, it is obviously entirely optional. There is some fun little things there like uh, your name in the credits and stuff of videos, but uh, I'm, ab I'm absolutely having a blast being back 
making content. It has been very fun. It is nice to be, uh, you can't see it on this screen, but nice to be back in a little, uh, little studio, um, and making stuff. So I will, uh, I'll leave the video here now. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, do let me know what you thought of Danube's uh, uh, account in the comments below as well. Do let me know what you've been playing lately, and I'll see you on the next episode of Project Platinum.